on that, I mean, you guys jumped out to a nice lead. They obviously were shorthanded, but you guys played pretty well. You got a great game from Zaya. What does it mean to be playing pretty well coming into the game tomorrow? Um, I mean, I mean, we challenged we challenged our players to play a lot better than we played last. I mean, last night. Um, I mean, they accepted the challenge and played well, and 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 that's the way we have to play. You know, win, lose, or draw. We want to play our best basketball um, on both sides of the on both sides of the ball. And um, I thought we had glimpses of it for long stretches in this game, and we just have to complete it. Obviously, tomorrow you're playing a team that you are familiar with. It's an early season game, but does it add some excitement to this tournament having one versus two for the championship tomorrow? Does it add it? <laughs> sure. I mean, we're excited. I mean, we, we, we chose to play in this tournament because uh, we got an opportunity to play top teams in the country, and that's been our theme all season long. So, you know, why not? Hey, Coach, uh, this is for you and for L.A. Can you just talk about the growth that you've seen and how significant was her play in the NCAA tournament, then the Tournament of Americas, the Canadian uh, women's team, Olympic team? How much has that uh, accelerated her growth? And what a game today, 18 points. Uh, I mean, LA has been, LA has been getting back to just 100% health. Um, um, she's a few years removed from, you know, ACL, knock on wood, and you know it, it throws your timing off. And I think now, you know, now that she's a junior, things just start clearing up for her. And I mean, I think it's mounting. It's it's in a place where um, you're going to start seeing it just more consistently. And uh, we believe in her. Um, I believed in her from, you know, the, you know, the, the moment that she, you know, decided to come to South Carolina. And I played her probably a lot more her first year than most coaches would have probably played her, played her more her second year. And then now, you know, we, we need her. I mean, we absolutely need her. But if she didn't get the, the early minutes in her career, we'd be seeing you know, the progress go a lot slower than what it is. And now we're at a place where, you know, she knows we count on her. I mean, she plays with grit. She plays with toughness. She doesn't back down from anybody. And, um, I mean, she's one that will go to war. And you're just seeing the statistics come behind all of that play. Um, I think this summer has helped me a lot, just playing against, obviously, experienced and skilled players, um, and then just trying to translate that to um, here in South Carolina and what we're doing here. So um, I'm grateful that I had that summer um, under my belt, and I think it's also helping me right now. Hey guys, it's Augusta. Um, this is a question for all of you. I just wanted to ask, you know, having having the a top a top two matchup this early, you know, this is your third top ten matchup of the season, and we're hearing now that the game's going to be moved to ESPN instead of ESPN two. Just for all three of you, you know, as a number one team in the nation, having these competitive matchups you know, play out and, and get, garner this interest, you know, just what does it do for, for growing the game of women's basketball? And what are your thoughts around, you know, scheduling these competitive matchups and, and getting eyes on, on really good competition, you know, early in the season? Well, I mean, obviously UConn has always been on our schedule for the last couple of years and, uh, and they still are on our schedule. We, I think it's great for women's basketball. I think all of us, all the teams that committed to coming here, knew what we were signing up for, knew that we were going to get a, an opportunity to to measure ourselves and, and to grow the game. I, I don't, I mean, this hasn't really been done before um, in non-conference without, you know, without it just being on someone's schedule. But here, we, we knew coming in um, who was going to be here. And I, I, I do think, um, <laughs> We, we got the most challenged side of the schedule, just having to play Oregon in this game, but it helped us. You know, it helped us 
focus in and, and, and get ready for had we had we won the game and we won the game um, to get ready for UConn and you know women's basketball you're gonna see this throughout I think I think Maryland played uh, beat Baylor today did Tennessee win Tennessee beat uh, Texas today I I mean there are a lot of great matchups in, in women's basketball in the non-conference and um, these are the stories that should be written you know <laughs> written and written and written and written because there's a lot that's going on in our game and we just got to we got to push it. We got to we got to make it we have to make it um an agenda to talk about all of these matchups and these players and the coaches and everything that makes women's basketball women's basketball great. Do you have a question on this one? <laughs> yeah, John. Uh, when you first got in the basketball there were maybe four or five teams that could contend for a national championship. It seems like the talent pool has grown and extended into more and more good teams. Yeah, it's parity. It's parity. There, you know, um, great players are going to all different places across, uh, you know, across the country, and it, it is, you know, it, it's, you know, expanding the amount of teams that can win a national championship. You know, I used to say only a few, but there's, there's more than a few. Um, we got a few here just in this, you know, the Battle of Atlantis, and um, I mean it's great. I think I think women's basketball on a collegiate level, on a pro professional level, you know, we're we're in high demand. We're in high demand and I you know, I hope that uh it continues. I hope that people continue to invest in our our sport because because we're good. I mean, we're good top to bottom. Um, I, I mean, when you play someone like UConn, you can't turn the ball over. That's one. Um, two, you, you, I mean, we, we have to make adjustments. I don't think we, we, we tried to make adjustments against Paige, um, but we just didn't execute. Um, and then you got to play, you got to beat them on the boards. I mean, you have to smash them on the boards. You have to, you have to defend. Like I, if it's anything that we're, we're bringing, it's probably a, a better defensive team. So we got to, we, we got to stay committed to that. And I think from an offensive standpoint, I think we are fur much further along than we have ever been when we've, when we've played them. Even probably even when we've played, uh, played when we beat them in 2020. Um, so it's a lot more spread out. Um, they've grown up, or, you know, this class has grown up. So they, they really have an understanding of what needs to get done and they have to execute. They got to see it through. Say that again. What was the first part of it? With having the dominant bigs and then you've got the dominant guards, how well has it come together of them understanding when to go inside, when to go out? Uh, it's been great. I mean, I think, and I think Zaya has a lot to do with it. You know, Zaya is, you know, the, the game that she played today, um, very unselfish, um, very efficient, you know, taking good. I think she got them to forget about her ability to score because she just started off just passing the basketball and then we, we, we got her involved um, in our offense and it, we, we've been trying to get to that place where we got we create a good balance but sometimes when I say get it to the post they you know it paralyzes them but I think now they understand it isn't necessarily just get the ball to the post and stand around it's get it to the post you know cut off you know and they, they, they've you know they've been around each other and played together long enough to have a better understanding of that. Thank you. Doug, and then we'll come back to Eric. For, for both players, I mean, what's your mindset going tomorrow? I mean, is it fun to be playing the second best team in the nation for you guys in a pretty big game to win a championship? Um, I think it's, it's pretty good for us. Um, I love that we play good teams early so we can get tested early. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty good game. Yeah, I'll just bounce off of that. I think it's important for us, like Coach mentioned, just to play every team, um, coming 
every team aggressively. I think that's one of our biggest things. Like, let's just make sure that we're setting a tone each game. Um, I mean, it's awesome that we get to play UConn again. Um, but I think just for us is just to make sure that we play the same time, play the same game every time we um, touch the floor. Dawn, how challenging is it? Things a little bit, will that continue on in the weeks ahead? Um, we're, we're, we're playing, but we're we're, play, we're playing to win. Um, and then you know, for for you know, the, the players that are coming off the bench that are aren't post players, um, they, they have to come in and, and, and make an impact because they you know, and, and that determines whether or not they can get in another time. And um, but slowly. You know, I, I thought today, yesterday was a good opportunity for our younger players to, to get some extended minutes. And today, uh, we got some good contributions and we got some bad contributions. And we, we have to continue to grow. I, I, I believe the type of schedule that we have doesn't allow them to grow up too much because there are games in which every possession matters. So, you know, hopefully, you know, we're going to play to win the game. I don't know how many we're going to play tomorrow. So, um, But when we play less or talent, um, they'll get a chance to grow in that way. Anything else for South Carolina? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.